Well, first of all, I don't think that um, you should see either or, all right? So by going to space, we can also improve what happens here. Sure, so it's sure. not like we're stuck on here. Welcome back. You are watching the Dr. Dandy Show. And today, we're asking the question, are we going to have to learn to live somewhere else on the solar system someday? I'd like to welcome my guest, Paul Van Susat. Is it going to be difficult? What are the challenges of actually getting folks, even as Elon Musk talks about, or even Naveen Jain talks about, small amounts of people there? Well, one of the challenges is first getting there, right? So we need a big rocket, which is what Elon Musk and uh, Jeff Bezos are working on for, among others. Uh, and then once you get there, you of course need to be able to survive. And so you need a bunch of different things. There's two differences though. One, if you go camp there, that's pretty easy. You, know, you bring everything you want met you, you know, just like camping here on Earth. And then you leave and you don't leave anything behind. In our case, we'd leave some stuff behind. But it's much harder to form a colony where you can live and basically live off the land. That's a whole different story. And so when you go to millions of people or, or hundreds of thousands of people, then you can't just bring everything from Earth. The logistics would be much too difficult to do that. And so you have to learn how to grow things on, over there. You've got to mine to get your resources, oxygen, water, uh, things like that. And so the challenge is how do you start that? Right? So going there and then bringing a machine to mine, uh, for instance, water. Right? That's actually what we're working on at Michigan Tech right now. Uh, you can do that, uh, but nobody currently has a machine that can do it, and so it needs to be developed, and you need money to do that, money and time. That's the, that's the challenge right now. And what about, and you said you need a big rocket to get there. I mean, besides that, what, what are some of the things that are stopping us? Would we just Is it just money? We have the technology to get there, right? Well, for a large part, it's the will to go, right? So the politicians have NASA, we have that. And so they do a lot of cool stuff. But a lot of it is gobbled up by this big rocket project, the SLS, which, by the way, is a really cool rocket. Um, but now with Falcon Heavy from, from Elon Musk and SpaceX, they can actually do a lot of what originally was intended to be done by this NASA rocket. And so then we can ship a lot of stuff once we have these rockets. And ship a lot of stuff, let's say, to Mars, for example. Yeah, or, or to the moon. Or right? the moon so, okay. so we have a big cargo capacity uh, because you, every kilogram counts. So just to give you an idea, um, when the Mars rover, the MSL, was sent to Mars, the rocket was 530,000 kilograms. Wow. And only 4,000 of that was sent to Mars, and only 900 of it landed on the surface. I see. So from the 531,000, you get 900. less than 1,000 on the surface. And then you're not even coming back. Because of that 900, if you wanted to come back, you only get uh, one-seventh of that back, roughly. So less than a little bit over 100 kilograms. So it's really, really important. Now, let me ask you this. If, if we do go there, what about the expenses? I mean, who is going to be able to afford it? I know that people are saying that, listen, you know what, it's going to, I'm going to make it affordable. But is that, really, is that realistic for the average family to be able to afford, you know, even when it's possible? Or are we talking about, here's the other question, is it only the elite and super rich that can go there and the rest of us are stuck here if something happens? Well, first of all, I don't think that... Um you should see either or, all right? So by going to space, we can also improve what happens here. Sure, and so it's sure. not like we're stuck on here unless we decide to ignore everything and not improve things. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be very costly at first to go there, all right? So first we gotta go into low Earth orbit. People are talking about hotels in low Earth orbit. Then perhaps onto the moon where maybe then we can start having tourism over there. On Mars, for the foreseeable future, that's definitely not going to be economical in the sense of that there would be a profit motive. The economy would be within the, uh, what they call cislunar space, so between the Earth and the Moon, basically. That's where the real customers are for economics right now. Mars, for the foreseeable future, um, I think is going to be more like a, a base in Antarctica, like a research base, where maybe ah. hundreds of people in, in the long run could live, and we can still have a supply line. Uh, I think that's more of the model for the foreseeable future that we're going to be working Unt on. Until we know more. But, and tell me about what you're doing at Michigan Tech to find a machine to, to you're saying, to, to develop water, correct? Yeah, so one of the base elements that could really help us to explore the solar system is water because you can create rocket fuel from water. The hydrogen and oxygen form together to form water. But you can do the other way around. You can have water split in hydrogen and oxygen, and that is your rocket fuel. So that can get us places. So you can make fuel stations in low Earth orbit to get to the moon or to Mars, wherever you want to go. And so water is one of the prime building blocks, if you will, of anything we want to do out there. It's also one of the easiest things to get because it's present in the form of ice.
but also in the form of uh, what we call hydrated minerals. And so at Michigan Tech, we are looking at how to liberate this uh, water that's bound in the minerals by heating up the gypsum in this particular case. And that's only 150 degrees, which is really not that hard not to hard do. Not yep, yep. And then the water comes out in the form of gas. And there's like no contaminations, so it's really clean, relatively low energy. And so what we're looking for right now is a nice gypsum deposit, which we have found on Mars. And then we can go there and liberate the water, and then we can have return fuel for the people that do go to the Mars. Amazing. So here's the thing, you know, I mean, there's so many, we, we talked with Paul, there are challenges in getting there, there are challenges to live there, but it's really fascinating to think about conceptualizing with, with leaders such as, as yourself, talking about, listen, how do we, can we make hotels in, in low orbit, or even on the moon, and then you can go from there to some other places. And why are we talking about this is because we want to be able to explore possibilities in case the Earth is not going to be either a, a, an option or that we continue in the same path and make it unhealthy for us. So really important stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, gave us a lot to think about there. When we return, we'll answer a few questions from social media with our panel. Please stay with us. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Partha Nandi. And if you enjoyed that video, you're going to love the next one. It's full of incredible information to help you start your healthy hero journey.